Hello and welcome to this AE Basics tutorial where I'm still talking about export. I know I said I'd finished but there's a couple of items that I realised that I haven't covered that would be quite useful to cover. And the item that's top on my list is to show you a little option under the composition menu which is composition and you see you've got one down here that says pre-render. And pre-render is a way of replacing effects heavy layers which you're finished with with rendered items in your composition. Now what do I mean by that? Well I've got this little composition here which I'm playing through and you'll see that it's got a pretty heavy background. The background layer is this particular one here which has got lots of effects on it that are causing the streaks to come. It's got an alpha channel around it and I've also included a solid black layer and a little vignette around it to get the effect of the background. So if I just solo those three layers you can see that's the background. Okay, now those are very effects heavy so that when I play through, even with a RAM preview or a shift RAM preview, I can't really see things as I want to see them. It's not really playing properly and I can't place objects and everything's going incredibly slowly. So what I want to do is take those three layers and I want to create a pre-rendered element. In other words, replace them with a file, a movie file of some sort. Now you have to have finished with the layers first. You have to be pretty sure that you're not going to make any major changes to the background. Now I'm very happy with the background that I've created. So what I want to do is export it as a very high resolution movie file. Now this is quite important. You don't want to export it as a compressed movie file such as H.264 or Flash or a MOV or even a, a low quality AVI. If you export it to a low quality item, what you're effectively saying is take this item and shrink it down in size and allow artifacting some kind of extra bits and pieces or distortions to come into the item. This is my final output. A little bit of distortion is acceptable because I need to compress it and make it small to send it over the internet. However, I'm going to use this as a background element in my final project. So if I compress it once, and then bring it back into my project and then I finish my project and I compress the whole thing out again the end result is going to look pretty awful because I'm going to double up on my artifacting on my distortions and my background is going to look far from perfect so when I export this or I pre-render it what I really need to do is create a very high quality version either lossless or an image sequence of some sort so I'm going to create an image sequence. I'm going to export an image sequence and bring that back into After Effects to replace the use of these layers. So how do I go about doing that? Well firstly I need to pre-compose the layers that I'm working on. Now there are lots of layers in this composition. There's all the text layers here that are bouncing away but I don't want to pre-compose those so I'm just going to shy those. They've all got the shy guy down here so your layers are all shy and then they hide when you click the little shy guy here. So I'm just selecting the layers that I want to pre-compose or I want to replace with this other item. So I'm going to pre-compose them. In CS6 it's a right click option and then you've got pre-compose or alternatively you can select the layers and go up to the layer menu and then go down to pre-compose or there is a keyboard shortcut of Control shift c Command shift c I'm going to pre-compose them and I'm going to call them BG for background. This is going to be my background composition and click OK. So now those items in this particular composition have been pre-composed together. All the other layers are untouched. I've just got the background. And now I actually need to open this composition, the background composition or pre-comp. Double click it and it opens up. And I want to export this or I want to pre-render this. So with it selected, just the layers that I want to see, I go up to the composition menu and I go down to pre-render and I click on pre-render and it says where do you want to output the movie to now I'm going to be outputting a image sequence so it's quite important that I create a new folder on my desktop and call it image sequence and double click that and select it and I can click save and then it puts it in the render queue now I don't want to change best settings because I want this to render and replace at exactly the same size as my original composition and with a very high quality I don't want to go fiddling too much with the render settings unless for instance I want to say include guide layers or I want to do a lower color bit depth or some other kind of change but generally speaking I'm not going to play around my render settings because I want this to come in exactly as it was created but what I do want to play around with of course is my output module and I'm going to click where I've got custom AVI if you're on a Mac you'll have QuickTime 
and I'm going to choose something that is uncompressed. And for me, that's going to be an image sequence. And I'm going to go down and I'm probably going to choose a TIFF sequence. If you're working a 32 bit per channel project, you're probably going to want a DPX or a Cinean sequence or possibly a Photoshop sequence. But for what I'm doing for illustration purposes, a TIFF sequence will do. But I want you to notice underneath the format, it says here import and replace usage. Now, import and replace usage appears to be saying that when I click OK and I save the file, what's going to happen is it's going to replace the composition that I've just done. But it isn't always quite that straightforward. I'm going to click OK. And you'll notice now that it's an image sequence. However, there's one little step that I need to take. I need to open up or twirl down where it says output module, this little item here. Twirl it down and then just make sure it says post render action import and replace BG. You really need to make sure if it hasn't got the right composition here, you need to make sure that you have selected the right composition and it definitely says which one you want to replace. So that when I have actually done the full render, it's going to come in and it's going to replace the background composition with the footage item. So if you're absolutely sure that it's going to replace the, the composition that you're working on and you're happy with that or another composition, you can always change it to another composition if you want to replace another composition in your project panel. Just make sure you take that pit whip and it goes to the composition that you are going to replace. Then you can click render and I'll come back to you after I've rendered this out. So now as we come to the end of our render, let's go over and have a little look in our project panel. And as we finish, there you go, we have the item coming in. If we go to our BG comp, you'll see that that's not changed, but if I go to expression example, there it is. The BG comp is still available so that we can go and make additional changes, but where it has been used inside the original composition here, you can open up and see all the layers. You can see at the bottom now, we've got the BG TIFF sequence, which is going to play through. So if I hit my space bar, you'll see that it should play through pretty quickly because of course all the effects have been rendered. They've been rendered into a single file which is going to play through really fast. So even though that was on my space bar and I'm not a very powerful machine, you can see it's playing through really quickly. And if I did a RAM preview, you can see that that's going to play through even faster. So pre-render is a way of rendering and replacing effects heavy layers, but what you need to do of course is open a separate composition for them so that you can actually render them out from that composition so you can finish off with what you want to, to work with. So if I just uh, solo that layer and I can hit spacebar, you can see it's going to play through pretty much like a, a normal footage item without any problems at all. But of course the BG comp is still available so if I do want to make changes I can go in and make those changes. I can select the layer, hit UU and go in and start to make changes to all the effects that I've already worked with. So. That's how you can pre-render in After Effects and save yourself an awful lot of time. Yes, you do have to wait for the item to render out and that can be slow and laborious, but the end result is that my original composition is now going to work so much quicker and be far easier for me to work with without me having to worry about these wretched items rendering all the time. Of course, you can always turn a layer off if it's causing you a problem and just see all the other bits and pieces, but then when placement comes along and you need to place items and you need the layer on, if it's not pre-rendered, it can be very, very slow. My name's Andrew Davis. I hope you found this tutorial useful, and thank you for watching.